So anybody who's interested in how I actually finished off this actual luggage rack, uh, I left it pretty much with a big chunky like bolt-on part here and also I hadn't finished this part. So I just wanted to show you what I did. I kept the original uh, part which I welded on and I just reshaped it and I notched it out. Actually what I've done is I've notched it out on this side as well as the other side. Um, I was only originally going to notch out one side but I found it just works a lot better having them both notched. And here what I did was... I actually grabbed a bit of stainless steel uh, eye bolt, I guess you would call it. Uh, I'll show you one. So one of these guys, it's a little stainless steel, I'm going to call it an eye bolt, there could be another name for them, but I basically cut off the thread and then just welded it onto the end of here, which gave me the perfect little uh, attachment to drill straight through that tab, uh, which I welded on and basically just bolted in. So it's sitting there now, obviously the mud guard has still got to go on, um, I've got the mud guard off because I'm working on a tail light idea which I mentioned also uh, which is another video coming out it's going to be really cool so that's something else so the only other thing that I've got left to do is paint it black but I'm not going to do that straight away purely because I have a bit of a situation with having this mounted and whether I can see the tail light that I'm going to install so I may end up putting uh, like a secondary tail light just in here somewhere so if I need to weld any tabs or anything, so I just thought I'll just leave it bare. I'll just cover it in like something like WD-40 to stop it from rusting, um, some sort of oil. And then, you know, when I'm ready to figure out that tail light, when I get the other tail light in, if I think it needs another one, then I'll put another one in. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Uh, it looks really sleek and uh, it's going to do the job. It's super strong. Like I can literally like move the bike around with that. Like it's just... Yeah, it's a lot stronger than I was originally going to make, but I'm super happy. Oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> in the process of me building this, I had a little bit of a, uh, a mishap. It happens. Uh, it's no big deal because the foam that goes on the upholstery, on the actual fabric, or should I say vinyl, um, you know, is going to cover that and you won't see it. It's only a tiny little dent. Anyway, uh, you'll see that I've got the template up top, so I'm about to start the seat. That's the next thing I'm working on. So let's get into it. Basically all I've done here is just made a test piece uh, with the same vinyl and foam and backing. Now the backing is just to stop the thread from pulling through the foam, um, so I'm told. And I'm no expert at this, I'm just learning as I go. So I'm going to have a go at doing this and if this works then I'll move on to the actual piece. Nope, broke the thread. <laughs> it's not a good start is it? Oops, we ran out of thread. So I've just jumped into my car because I'm almost out of thread. That's all I have left. It's not gonna cut it. Uh, it's Saturday, it's currently 12.30. Uh, the place that I'm going to is apparently open till one. Hope they haven't gone home early. Uh, this thread is like, it's not generic thread. It's a lot thicker than normal. It's probably as thick as you can get to fit in those um, domestic machines. I know that not every place uh, stocks it, so I know this place that I'm going to will have it. So let's hope they're open. Yes, they're open. Sweet. Alrighty, so we've got the thread, I'm back, I've threaded it into the machine. Uh, this little blue tape, I just thought I'd mention what it is. Uh, I spoke to my upholstery guy just to get some tips and pointers on when I'm sewing this uh, whole seat thing together. And he mentioned to do this just so that you have a line to follow uh, when you're sewing, just to try and keep your 
I guess stitching straight, it's what they do apparently for apprentices. So if you just see this and wonder what the hell it is, that's what it's for. Um, I guess I'm an apprentice. So I'm hoping my seat turns out somewhat uh, as cool as this one. This was done by my upholstery guy. Uh, I did a full video on how this was made. Actually, I didn't say a single word in the entire video. It's just the process of building the seat. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link to that in the description for you to go and see. So just to explain what the lines mean and what I'm doing here uh, is this line here that follows all the way through and then back down again is the line that I'm going to sew. That's the sewing line and the outside line I'm also going to sew. That's going to be the join. The inside line is where the seat actually starts to curve down. So that's the flap section across the top there. Uh, a bit like where my template is. So that was the original template. Um, so that's where the seat's pretty much flat. And then from there it curves down. And I want this to this stitch line to come down as it starts to curve. So basically... I've done a line 10 mil back from the curve. So this is the original line where the top of the seat is, this one here. Uh, and then I've done it basically 10 mil in. So it's gonna start to, the stitching's gonna start to like kink at the, like 10 mil at the top. And then it's gonna continue down to obviously where I'm going to uh, sew the next. So this, this line here is the end of this section. And then there's gonna be another section like basically sewn onto that. What I'm going to do is glue on a little bit of this foam and a little bit of the material under the foam uh, to stop the thread from pulling through. That's the only real reason for the material apparently. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just glue it on with this stuff here. The reason you glue it on is so that it doesn't wiggle around. Uh, so that, you know, the three pieces of um, material, I guess, don't, you know, move from each other. And that just sticks it in place. And then the stitching is obviously what's going to hold it uh, permanently. <laughs> neighbor popped over the other day uh, and I threw some ideas at him when I was designing this and he came up with this cool idea so what I've done it's subtle but it's there uh, and it, you may or may not notice it so what I've done is uh, each one of these as it gets skinnier this way I've actually made these sections skinnier by two mil on each one so it just progressively gets smaller and smaller it's kind of cool it's something that not many people would notice that's kind of something that he had come up with the idea and I thought yep yeah, I'm gonna run with that and see what it looks like I'm glad I did because it does make a difference to me anyway. Some people might not notice it, but uh, it's just those small things that make a difference, I believe. So just a quick update as to uh, you would have seen me sanding the underside of this around the edge and why I did that was just to allow for the material as the, the actual vinyl comes up and over it's just going to allow that little gap that I need. Um, I learned my lesson from when I got the upholsterer to do the brat seat that's over there uh, on that bike and I realized that I need a little bit more room in there uh, just to get this to sit down. It'll still work, it'll still be fine. All it's going to do is, as it sits on there, it's just going to sit a little bit further up. So I'm just trying to allow it to sit down as low as I can. Um, like I said, it's not a big deal. And that tool that I used, that is so perfect for this job. Uh, just trying to get around this nice curve here. It worked really well. I wouldn't be able to do that so well with a grinder. So that was awesome. So hopefully that helps you if you're going to build a seat. Just make sure that you make it thick enough so you give yourself enough 
uh, clearance to take out a little bit of material when you do do the actual upholstery. You don't have to do this, like I said, uh, if you want it to sit on top, you don't have to necessarily round this so it comes down the frame. You can just have the seat sitting on top of the frame and it still looks cool with the frame being exposed. So that's the seat uh, pretty much all sewn up. I'm not going to do anything at the front here uh, purely because this is going to wrap around and it's going to be perfect to go around like this. Normally you would probably put a flap at the front and sew the flap on um, but because this is going to, the way it's going to work, I don't have to do that. So how I'm actually going to attach the fabric to the actual fiberglass is with a contact cement. It's like a glue, it's a really, really strong glue used by most upholstery places. Uh, and it's just, you spray it on one side, spray it on the other side, let it get tacky and then put the two together. And that's, it's super strong. Um, that's all I'm gonna do. I don't have any abilities to staple into this because it's too hard to use a staple gun on. Otherwise I would, if this was timber or something, I could do that, but it's not. So that glue is gonna be perfect. And then I'll probably put once it's all wrapped up, I'm going to put a liner um, on the underside just to make it nice and neat. Oh crap, it's gone off. Oh well, down to the hardware shop we go. So I grabbed myself a new can of the actual contact adhesive or contact cement, whatever you want to call it, but I also grabbed myself a cheap spray gun uh, while I was down there because I want to attempt to try and spray this stuff if I can. I may need to thin it so I grabbed myself some all-purpose thinners. Um, I don't know how this is going to go. I emphasize on the attempt side of things. I've answered the question in the comments many times as to what this stuff is. Uh, this is the stuff that I get locally but if you're in the States or wherever, uh, I will leave a link near the, in Amazon for the exact sort of stuff that you can get, just a different brand. Wow, that actually worked out a lot better than I expected. Uh, it comes out sporadically, but I guess that's normal considering it's so thick and once I do this on both sides, it's yeah, it's going to be spot on. Straight out of the tin, I didn't need to thin it down or anything. So that's exactly what it looks like when the upholstery guys do it. So I'm assuming it's normal. So I've just basically rough cut it now, but because I went away and had some lunch and came back, um, I'm left with, you know, it's not sticky anymore. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more glue with the spray gun, but with this entire process, you don't need to have a spray gun to do this. Uh, in fact, I when I did the foam on this, all I used was just an applicator like this with the notches in it. So it is new uh, and it's going to obviously be tight, but it locks in place. Uh, this little piece here, I've just still got to find a home for it, but it works perfectly. So just pull that lever there and it unlocks and then latches down. So <laughs> I'm stoked, really stoked that it's actually working out as planned. So that's the seat done. Uh, I'm going to put this somewhere out of harm's way because I don't really want to burn it or uh, scratch it or dent it or do anything to it uh, whilst I'm doing the rest of the bike. So I might put that in a spot where it's not going to get damaged and move on to something else. 